it's story time the angles of depression of the top and the bottom of an 8 meter tall building 8 meter tall building so let me just let me just draw that uh, i have an 8 meter tall building over here and uh, what i know is that what do what do i know i know that this building is 8 meters tall that that's all i know for now um from the top okay the angles of depression of the top and the bottom the top and the bottom of an 8 meter tall building from the top of a multi storied building okay now it makes sense so there is a multi storied building somewhere and it's uh, it's clearly taller because so why is it taller actually yeah why is it clearly taller it's clearly taller because uh, there are angles of depression for both the top and the bottom of this 8 meter tall building so this is the top of the 8 meter tall building this is the bottom and both have angles of depression if this building had been higher then from from here one of the points would have had an angle of elevation and the other point would have had an angle of depression so um, okay both have an angle of depression so this is a taller building and maybe they're also helping us a multi storied you know to get the hint it's a tall building are 30 and 45 degrees okay so now now i need to draw this part this is the interesting part what is, what where do i draw this 30 and 45 in fact once i do this the question probably hopefully becomes easier so what is this the angle of depression of the top from the top of a, okay so not from somewhere here but somewhere here from the top of a multi storied building at 30 and 45 so the horizontal is going to be this that's the horizontal now because the angle of depression is at 30 for the top and i see respectively over here which means that it's 30 for the top and 45 for the bottom it would be really weird for it to be the other way so in any way this is they need not even have given that so uh, oh no not the straight line over here yeah for the top it's 30 degrees which means that this angle is 30 degrees and uh, let's let's see now i need um to it to go to the bottom so this angle this line is the line of sight to the bottom and that angle will be 60 60 degrees oh no what is it it's 45 degrees 45 degrees got it that's all that's given to me now i need to know okay what do you want what is the question want find the height of the multi storied building oh this height is what we want this height let me mark that whenever i don't know the name of something i'm just going to give it a name that this height is what i want and the distance between the two buildings the distance that that is this one over here this distance is the other thing that we want now this is usually the part of the question that we need to be careful about because now once we have this it boils down to asking where are the right triangles here now uh, as i look uh, one thing i can see is because this is 30 right i know that uh, i need i need to find a right triangle and i know that because this angle is given to me it's a clue for me to draw maybe this or basically imagine in my head this line because this line is not a real line right this is this doesn't exist but i imagine that and i know that this will also be 30 which gives me a triangle over here can you see that a right triangle over here and similarly there's another much more real right triangle over here because this is the height of the building and the multi storied building and this is the distance d so this is much more real and that angle will be 45 degrees wait a minute if that is the case if the bottom is 45 degrees then find the height of the multi storied building and the distance between the two so i have to find two things but this must mean that both these are the same because 45 degrees means that uh it's opposite side and the adjacent side will basically be equal right because this is 45 this is 90 this will also be 45 which means that d and h are actually the same things so we're finding two things but it's actually just one thing makes me feel better now how do i do this though the first thing i can see is the only length given to me is 8 so before i even start questions like this what i like to do is ask hey is this even findable like what i call you know is this is this problem solvable and the way i like to think about it is if i am standing on the building over here and if i have one angle of depression line like basically if i shoot a laser at a 30 degree angle below the horizontal and if i shoot another laser at 45 below the horizontal then these two lasers uh, can meet it can can keep going forever but there's only one point at which they'll make a distance they'll have a distance 8 between them all points before this they'll have a lesser distance between them and all points after this they'll have a larger distance because they're always diverging so i know that with the information given to me 
I can actually pinpoint this point over here. Start at eight, go back. You will find this point because finding this point is exactly the same as finding this distance and this height. You can do that. So now, what do I do? Okay, because I know this height is eight. I I'll pick this height is also eight. So this length over here, but that's not directly the side of any triangle. What I'm really looking for is a way to relate things that I know to the things that I want, and I know because this is the Uh, this is D. This will also be D. Uh, this will also be D. Let Let's color that so that you know what I'm talking about. That will also be D. And this height we don't know what that is, right? But this will be basically if I just have to like write it over here, I'll maybe say it's H minus eight, H minus um eight, because this whole thing is H. This is eight, so this is H minus eight. I think I have. I think I I I yeah. I I think I know what to do here. Um, let's see. I have two variables basically H and D, which I need to find. Which, uh, because it's forty-five degrees, I kind of can even eliminate already. I can just call both of them the same thing, which actually I think I should I should do for now. But if that wasn't the case, if this was some some other angle, how would, how I would have thought about it is there are two variables, two equations. The two equations will come from one from this triangle by relating this side to this side using the tan of this angle, and the other equation will come from this triangle, relating this side and this side using the tan of this angle. So. Let's just do the forty-five degree one first because you can see clearly that this is H, this is D. So H by D will be equal to tan forty-five opposite by opposite by adjacent, and tan forty-five is equal to one. But I I don't know if you should remember that. So you can always just I always just draw it very quickly for myself, and I have forty-five over here. And I know if this is one, then this will be one because it's an isosceles triangle, and this will be root two by Pythagoras' theorem. So here I need tan, so it's one. Basically, that gives for me h equals d. That is super convenient. Makes the question much simpler. So I can forget all the d's that I see, or or maybe I'll, I'll forget the h's that I see, and then mark it, mark them as d's. And I know that that's all I'm trying to find. Now the second thing I need to do is look at this triangle. So I know h minus eight by d will be equal to tan thirty, right? Opposite by adjacent equals tan of this angle. So h minus eight. This is where the eight is coming in handy. This information it's needed uh, by d equals uh, tan of thirty degrees. Tan of thirty degrees. And to remember tan of thirty, once again I draw my what I call what I like to call my sixty degree triangle. So let me draw that say over say maybe over here. So I have my sixty degree triangle. That does not look like sixty degrees. So sixty degree triangle. And uh, I know that if I draw this, then if this is one, then this will be two, and this length over here will be root of two square minus one square, or root three. So tan thirty is root three by one. Tan thirty. Oh no, tan thirty is over here. This is thirty. So tan thirty will be one by root three. You know, it's, it's easy to get uh, get a little bit confused, but I always like to think, hey, thirty is a smaller angle, right? So its tan can't be root three. Its tan has to be less than one. So it's one by root three. So with that, I would have. Let me just scroll down a little bit over here. So h minus eight by d by d will be equal to tan thirty, or one by root three, and this gives me. So I have one equation, one variable. Oh, I forgot to replace my h with d. I to have one equation, I should have used this idea. So it's d minus eight by d equals one by root three. And now it becomes. Uh, how do I do this? Hmm. So maybe I will. Uh, I'm just quickly thinking whether I should uh, keep the root three on this side or move it there. We do all of this in our, some of some of these pre calculations in our head, right? To minimize work, we're lazy people. So I'm I'm gonna just maybe cross multiply. So left d root three. Uh, maybe I can keep the color so that you know where things are moving. So this root three, I'm just multiplying on this side. So d root three minus eight root three, eight into root three. Will be equal, will be equal to uh, d, right? Now my job is to just take collect the d's to one side, which is basically the same as subtracting by d on both sides of the equation. So I'll have d d times root three minus one, root of three minus one, and that'll be equal to eight root three, eight into root three. See now, you you should notice that actually the part where you're using uh, anything to do with trigonometry is is over long ago. Like that was that was over when you wrote these two equations, tan forty-five and tan thirty. 
the part where you're dealing with heights and distances was, was over even before that when you drew through this diagram which is probably the um, the interesting part converting the story into the into the right triangles now we are basically doing the algebra needed to give an answer that doesn't look too uh, you know uh, too ugly we want to make the answer as beautiful as possible so you have d equals 8 root 3 by root 3 minus 1 and almost always i leave it there but uh, many times the the teacher used to insist that i do this thing called rationalizing the denominator uh, which is basically just we don't like for some reason i have no idea why we don't like square roots in the denominator so what you do to get rid of that is you treat this as a minus b and then you put a plus b on both sides on on the numerator and denominator and if you do that uh, the reason you do this is you'll get a square minus b square you'll get it of the square roots so this will be equal to 8 root 3 into root 3 plus 1 which uh, should be uh, something <laughs> let's go there but the bottom is simpler so uh, root 3 minus uh, root 3 into root 3 is 3 minus 1 will be 2 so you have a nice neat little 2 below and you have an 8 over here 8 over here and you have root 3 into root 3 plus 1 i'm just going to carry this inside and and, and multiply you'll have 3 plus root 3 right that's what you'll have 8 into 3 plus root 3 so let's just cancel uh, uh the 8 with the 4 over here 8 with the 2 and get a 4 over here so let's say 4 and 4 into 3 plus root 3 seems to be the answer for d hmm i don't know whenever i get answers like this i feel a little bit weird maybe i should calculate the final answer maybe i should leave it here So four into three plus root three will be equal to twelve plus four root three. Hmm. Okay. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe I should be accepting answers that look um, a little bit uh, non-standard. Let's say. So then I'll come here and I'll say let's move this a little bit back over here. So d equals four into three plus root three, and then this d will also be the same thing. The height is also equal to four into three plus root three, and we have solved. the question